Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier. Now, this is a special dedicated rant. Uh, Michael A.J. Norris, once again, a, a Mike Messier subscriber, and thanks to Michael for this suggestion. Michael basically was uh, wise enough to not be victim to a bait and switch. It was a Facebook friend request, I believe, that Michael got from an attractive young woman, and once he clicked on that, it kind of took him somewhere else uh, into the dark places of the internet. And uh, probably most people watching this, both men and women of all ages, can relate to this if you've been on the internet for any amount of time. But for the male demographic, a uh, great deal of which is the Mike Messier YouTube uh, subscriber uh, list, this happens uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Where you're a guy, uh, you're on Facebook or another social media platform, and uh, you're minding your own business, you get some friend request or some... Uh, request to link or whatever you tag on a couple of buttons and it's an attractive female face and the next thing you know uh, you're face to face with pornography you're face to face with some type of website looking for your money some type of uh, to be very blunt folks and you're gonna have to forgive the bluntness of this video uh, f you click on a couple of links and you're basically being proposed uh, to get laid if you give up your money or you give up your credit card number or you give up something Usually it's some type of money or currency uh, Or sign up for some email list or some type of mailing list With later hopes that this company is going to get your money so For those of you watching this it might seem uh, You know common sense or whatever, but the the reality is uh the male urge, especially the young male demographic urge to have sex with attractive women is so strong that sometimes it can blur uh, your common sense. And I've had very intelligent friends of mine, uh, a friend of mine who, who is a doctor and uh, you know, a, a real MD. And even he, when he was doing one of these uh, social media things, I think he was actually on a dating app, but he, he got hooked into something that he was like, is this real? I said, I said, let me read it. I took a look at the messages. It was obviously, to me, uh, a fake, a phony, uh, some type of scam, bait and switch scam from pornography. But because my friend was not objective in this situation, it was subjective. He was being subjective because he thought he might have a chance of meeting a woman uh, he couldn't imagine that or he, it, it caught him off guard. So the point is it could happen to anyone. It's not just uh, My buddy here Michael AJ. It's not just me. It's not just you uh, Anyone out there can fall victim to these scams now uh, Michael the point Michael was trying to ask me to make on his behalf was how does this uh, in 2020 how is this allowed to happen? My simple answer for that is that if I just looked up the number uh, I think it was Pew Research, P-E-W Research, uh, either .com or .org. It said 3.5 million people, I'm sorry, 3.5 billion people are using social media, I believe in just the United States, uh, in 2020, with that number expected to rise. I, I think it was 3.5 billion people in the U.S. right now uh, estimated to be using some type of social media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, even YouTube, I was surprised right here on YouTube is listed as social media. Um, so what does that mean? Of all those people, now you say, say one billion is using Facebook. It could be more, it could be less. How many people do you think are working at Facebook? How many people? It's not just, I mean, Zuckerberg is not just sitting there by himself with a stack of computers monitoring everything. How many people are working for him? A thousand, 10,000, uh, less? I don't know, I don't know the answer to that. But the amount of people using these social media platforms and the amount of scams, uh, scams that could be taking place on social media, you're never going to be able to afford to have enough employees, no matter who you are, uh, to regulate every single conversation, every single scam, every single potential scam on there. Um, as a side note, that's why I'm very leery and, and not really into, for the most part, donating money to things online to be quite honest it's nothing against these charities but i just don't know if i fully trust it and oftentimes i don't so that's the gofundmes and all that good stuff of the world i don't often trust it because i just don't feel secure 
uh, in giving the money through that way, through online, especially through social media. So then we go back to this conversation about the porn. And, you know, like I said, it might seem like common sense, but it's really uh, the male agenda, so to speak, trying to get laid, trying to meet girls, trying to meet women. In these tough times, it's very difficult. So that's why guys are so um, vulnerable to getting uh, hooked into these scams. So if you're a guy out there, the, the rule of thumb is if you get a friend request from an attractive young woman, uh, what do you say guys, 75 to 90% of the time, if not more, it's a, a bullshit account. It's not even a girl behind it, it's some guy running a business trying to get your money. The times, the you know, the 10 to 25%, maybe that's a legitimate female, how, how would you know? I guess one thing you can do is you can go to the profile page Check the info. Uh, if it says what, where this girl is going to college, first of all, is it a legitimate college? Is it a real college that she goes to? I mean, I remember I used to live in a town, uh, let's say the town was Wakefield, and I would get a friend request from girls from University of Wakefield. There was no University of Wakefield. So obviously someone is making this crap up and just putting words together thinking they sound correct. Um, you can see things where if the, the scam if they are taking stuff from your information, like where you've gone to school or where you've worked and somehow appropriating that into their profile, then you know you're really getting targeted uh, for a scam, you know? And uh, I, d I typically, if I get a scam thing like that, I will typically report it. That's one thing everyone can do to help the community of, of everyone, not just men, not just, you know, yourself but help other people if you get what you think is a scam um, friend request or a, a fake profile report it click a couple of buttons that does help the social media people Facebook or whoever regulate um, so that's why you know to answer Michael AJ's question he was asking how can this happen in 2020 how can we be uh, still getting this scam crap the answer is there's just not enough people to regulate the social media um, so we have to we have to be active and social self-regulate and also uh, There were other scams. There's not just this type of scam, but I, I mentioned this a few times I still get these goddamn car scams on my phone um, These car scams meaning a company calling me Telling me that I need a special type of insurance on my car. Well, how do they get the information for my vehicle? I don't know but somehow they've got my number and I continuously block their phone number. It comes from Los Angeles. I continually block the phone number trying to stop getting these phone calls, but they still come. And they're people. They're not just, uh, it's not just a robot sometimes, it's actual people. Which is even more deplorable that human beings are actually going to a job, working in one of these companies, taking people's, uh, taking a paycheck to try and scam people. I called uh, my car dealership at one point when I first started getting these car uh, insurance calls and asked them about it and they told me it's a scam and they told me to stay away from it. So there you go. I've got a third topic I want to discuss. This is a, a rant I guess in three parts because uh, now we're going to get into some, some places that I might lose some people and people might get angry but that's fine. We talk about uh, these these scams but what about uh, basically the pornography scams okay but what about the real women out there that are doing things now um, and it, 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 it there it ranges it ranges uh, between and I want to I really just want to say it ranges in deplorability from simple Instagram posts and Facebook posts and Twitter posts I guess Instagram's the worst into uh, then you get into for own, uh, what was it only fans? Uh, for for fans only, and basically what this stuff is, anybody can be a porn star now. Uh, you know, anybody, anybody with a camera on their phone and a, a access to the internet, which is pretty much everyone. Any woman who feels, and I, I, I heard I heard a, a woman who who I'm a Facebook friend with said, well, I feel confident enough to do a for only account. Well, what, what does that mean, confident enough? Well, it's just, to be honest, our de de declining moral values. Our society 
And I, I will put the fucking finger on the Paris Hiltons and the Kim Kardashians and their ilk that women, young women especially, are now encouraged and implored to be exhibitionists. That's empowerment now. It's not, hey, you know, Susan B. Anthony, we fought for the right to vote and I can bring home the bacon and, and fucking cook it up in a pan and all these wonderful things. It's I can take my clothes off and finger bang myself and take photos of it and get money from idiot guys off the internet. So that's the evolution of empowerment, apparently, by today's standard. So uh, this, the reason why I say it's a hot topic is because, you know, a, young, a lot of young, attractive, pretty women, uh, they get their, uh, their boyfriend is social media. The amount of clicks, the amount of fucking hearts, the amount of likes, the amount of retweets, and uh, every woman now thinks she's a fucking model. Who, and that's, hey, whatever. But when women uh, get upset because they think that guys are not uh, macho enough, or they're too macho, or they're too testosterone driven, when, uh, for the women's side of that, when you're fueling these fantasies with every girl's got a fucking show as much skin as possible and get as many likes as possible, you're fueling that. You're fueling those craven urges of the men. I don't have a fucking solution. It's free enterprise. Uh, you know, everybody, I mean, look, in the 70s, you had Marilyn Chambers, you know, you had uh, Betty Page being a um, uh, model for photography clubs. And now we put her on a pedestal and make movies about her. So, and look, Playboy magazine run by a man. You know, I was talking to someone the other day who said, oh, Hef was ahead of his time. You know, he, he really saw the empowerment of women. I said, maybe, but he also saw how to make money off guys jerking off to naked pictures of women. So I'm not the moral uh, ruler for anybody's standard. I'm not trying to judge anyone for, for partaking in pornography, enjoying it, uh, getting a profession out of it. Do what the fuck you want. But when you wonder, why, why people are getting confused and uh, gender roles and, and gender issues are, are warped and uh, confusing for everyone. It's stuff like that. There is, uh, there's a lot of confusion out there. So that's why young men are tempted uh, to just pay for it. And then you get into a whole situation of, well, should, should prostitution be legal? I mean, if you're gonna have a society which just encourages women as soon as uh, they can to post uh, naked or half-naked pictures of themselves, why not just make, fuck it, just make pornography uh, the, the opening uh, taste and go full on with uh, legalized prostitution. I mean, that's what our society is encouraging. So there you fucking have it. Maybe some people think that's fine. I don't know. I, I particularly don't. But in any fucking event, um, I don't have all these, these solutions there are uh, other places online that, that people, especially for whoever's watching this, is probably the, the young male demographic. There's a YouTube channel, Entrepreneurs in Cars. The guy has all this uh, talk and his issues. Uh, he, he talks about things. You know, he's an interesting guy, Canadian. So uh, there's other places you can look for these answers. Uh, and look, I, I don't, I, I'm not coming down on uh, women either because look, they, they have their own problems. They have a whole slew of problems to deal with, obviously, trying to figure things out themselves. And for the women, and I'm sure that there's a, there's a high populace, because you, you know, only the, the squeaky mouses get the wheels, but for the women that don't partake in this online uh, exhibitionism of their bodies, how do they feel? They're being left out. They're not getting all these likes and hearts and crap. You know, I was once uh, living in an area where there was kind of this, I wouldn't call him a homeless man, but kind, sort of, we called him Citizen X. He always had a fucking opinion about everything. But he said to me in one of his rants, um, he said, he said, men are voyeurs, women are exhibitionists. You know, and this guy was halfway fucking nuts. But what he said was true. Uh, men are vo voyeurs and women are exhibitionists. And in this shitty age of society, 
that's what things have come down to. You can disagree, you can leave hateful comments or, or like the comments, MikeMessier.com, please subscribe and like and all that crap. 2021.